stay, it is very important to determine drug structure like paracetamol, aspirin, all the drugs they have uh, their own structures. So how to determine that? We have to understand the first important concept of NMR to determine the structure of the organic compounds. The second important uh, tools to detect the structures is mass spectrometry that I have already discussed in my earlier video. For NMR, you should know what uh, the concept of NMR, uh, which concept of NMR to determine the structures. The first important concept is chemical shift, where I have already discussed the chemical shift value, like if it is aldehyde proton, the chemical shift is 9.5 to 10 ppm, uh, carboxylic acid 10 to 13 ppm, like that. All the ppm values are there. These are the very important uh, values of uh, chemical shift. The second important uh, uh, concept is nothing but your coupling constant or J value. So what is that coupling constant? The splitting pattern or coupling pattern or multiplicity of NMR peaks is observed due to spin-spin relaxation of nucleus. Like we have already discussed one structure in my earlier video that if this is the structures you have three peaks in NMR, A, B and the C, okay? This become is a very highly deshielded around 10 to 30 ppm, okay? Like that you can get the peak values. Over here, you must understand, each peak is going to be splitted by the influence of the neighboring nucleus. Now, the splitting of one H peak can be calculated with the help of N plus one rule, where N is the number of neighboring proton. So for this peak will be split at n plus 1, n is a neighboring proton is 2, so this is will be triplet. For this B peak, it will be a quartet, okay, and this remain as a single. So this splitting is very important, like how the tri triplet will go, you know, it is uh, 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 1. So if you see the, the distance between the, you know, the, the the you know space line or distance between the or the spacing between the peaks is referred as coupling constant or j value whose unit is hertz j value whose unit is hertz suppose you have a uh, hydrogen which is a vicinal uh, hydrogen okay then the j value uh, you know transfer j value the coupling is through three bond that's why it is 3j coupling or vicinal coupling which is 6 to 8 hertz. J cis, the hydrogen which is double bond, it is 6 to 15 hertz. J trans is a higher 11 to 12 hertz, 11 to 18 hertz. And the J geminal, where the hydrogen and the same carbon of a double bond, it is only 0 to 5 hertz. So this, uh, you know, play a very important characteristic role to determine the organic compounds. Now, for example, you have uh, benzene, right? The benzene, the chemical shift of benzene usually is 7.27 ppm. Okay. Now, whatever the electron donating group, if it is attached to benzene over here and electron withdrawing group, the di substituted benzene always gives the you know two different peak of benzene, and that's why you get doublet of doublet, which is actually which is not a quartet, the doublet of dub, uh, 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 the doublet kind of peak in a di para di substituted benzene. In this particular case, if you want to see the how the coupling takes place, if A and B coupling, then it is called as J ortho coupling. Okay, A A cannot couple because they are the chemical equivalent chemical shifts are same. So you remember one thing: when the equivalent proton proton with same chemical shifts do not show any coupling to each other like for example i have a cs3 co cs3 the both have a same chemical shift and that's why they do not couple with each other okay so j ortho so then a and b over here is j para okay j para and uh, in uh, if it is mono substituted benzene then you would have got the j meta so j ortho is 7 to 10 hertz J para 0 to 1 hertz, J meta 2 to 3 hertz, these are the value, okay. So now one thing you remember, the trans and cis can be identified by this NMR coupling constant value, 
where uh, the you know like uh, the malic acid which is cis form which is less stable and more reactive with melting point 135 degree more heat of combustion than fumaric acid which is trans form which is more stable okay melting point uh, you know uh, 287 degree minus 287 degree and the uh, malic acid is minus 135 degree so I, uh, th th so these are the things you know that's why fumaric acid can be you know uh, the the less uh, reactive and the malic acid is more reactive so that's why malic acid can be a good dinophile in deal solder reaction so that's why the j value help us to understand the structure the di you know different type of structures of the compound even if you want to understand the structure of uh, cyclohexane cyclohexane its typical structure with one axial proton and one you know uh, axial and equatorial proton they have a two different chemical shift so uh, to cyclohexanes you know like sugar molecule we can determine different different chemical shift in the sugar molecule and there is a one uh, exclusive equation known as Carl plus equation which actually uh, correlate uh, between the j value and the dihedral angle okay it is a, it is a 3j coupling which is nothing but your a cos square phi which is a dihedral angle b cos phi plus c is very rare in g pattern niper they may not ask you you know for this type of uh, in depth question so let us go ahead with a uh, concept of structural elucidation now if you have suppose these two structure one is this kind of structure and all over is this kind of structures okay so if you see how many peaks you can observe over here it will give one equivalent peak then the b okay and then the c so you have three peaks in nmr in one h nmr okay one h proton but if you compare to this over here you get a over here b c and d okay the four peak in one h nmr but if you also see over here the carbon also same so c13 also you get a same number of peaks that is three but over here it is c13 peaks you get uh, four peaks that is why uh, sorry the five peaks that is why because you have one two three four and the five okay so that's why c13 and 1h both serves very important uh, tool to identify the structures okay especially uh, if you have uh, uh, structural isomers okay uh, like diethyl ether and methyl propyl ether okay those structural isomers can be identified now to begin with the uh, concept of um, um, structural insulation one thing to remember whenever the benzene is substituted with electron donating group and the electron withdrawing group the two chemical shift the electron withdrawing group make a proton is more d shielded okay and electron donating group makes this b proton more shielded so if it is more shielded then its value will be less than 7.27 if it is d shielded the value will be more than 7.27 so you must understand whenever you get a sum uh, how many number of you know, peaks around the 7 is very important to understand whether it is mono substituted benzene di substituted benzene or you know para di substituted benzene now let us begin with the concept of structural insulation whenever structural insulation comes with a formula like c7 uh, n6 and o okay you should know how to calculate the ihd or index of hydrogen deficiency now ihd can be calculated by with the help of this formula c plus 1 uh, plus n minus h minus x okay upon 2 now if you calculate isd over here uh, you know the isd if it is 1 it is 1 double bond 0 no double bond if it is 2 ihd 2 double bond or 1 triple bond if it is 3 then it is 3 uh, double bond or 2 triple bond now 1 ihd also refer 1 cyclohexane so that's why in uh, whenever it is ihd4 it signifies benzene because you have a three double bond and one cyclohexane okay so now if you see the ihd value calculated is five so if it is five then you can find that it is maybe benzene and plus some of the 
you know, uh, one more double bond. Now you have to see oxygen containing the double bond. You can see, you know, this aldehyde, the uh, carboxylic acid, the amide. These are the oxygen containing, uh, you know, containing double bond. So you can predict, you know, from from that particular structure. Like if it is one benzene, then I should minus C seven H six O minus C six H five, which is a mono substituted benzene, because you know I'll be having uh, some chemical shift value. Mm, because one functional group, no, four plus one, so one but one benzene, one functional group. Okay, so uh, without the help of IR and uh, uh, you know other functional group history, you can find out the structure. So if you see, it is an aldehyde. So the structure is benzene. So this is a very easy way you can find out the structure. We can move to the second uh, structure, second examples. Okay.